If you guys haven't seen this, Quinn is getting uh, changes next patch. So her health growth increases from 99 to 107. Her Q base damage uh, decreases from 20 to 120 to 20 to 100. E damage goes from 40 to 160 to 40 to 140. So, of course, uh, I've seen every single Quinn player get really upset by this, myself included, when I first saw these changes. Uh, for the for most part, I honestly saw this coming because her win rate was pretty high. Currently, as it stands, her win rate's not that high. But I remember at the start of the patch, she was one of like the top champs, like right here. She had 53% win rate, S tier. Quinn's S tier. You see, that doesn't happen. Uh, she had 53 at the start. Um, and her pick rate's uh, getting higher. So she's pretty strong. And I've been playing Quinn a lot for a lot of years. And... Um, I find that in this current state, like she is pretty strong with Static Shiv. Uh, it's a very strong item on her. And they haven't nerfed it too much, so she's still really OP with it. So that's why she's S tier, if you're wondering. Static Shiv is the main reason. Most builds that Quinn players go is they go Shiv into Ghost Blade or Shiv into Gale Force. Gale Force got nerfed a lot, so more people are turning into Ghost Blade, but Ghost Blade's still the best. But I wasn't surprised to hear nerf. But to be honest, these nerfs aren't full nerfs, okay? So as it says, uh, Sounds really sucky because even the buff they gave, which is your health increase going from 99 to 107, that does suck a lot because what this entails is that um, your cut down value goes down. So all Quinn players go cut down top. You don't build Doran, so your health is really low. So most enemies you play against, you have extra cut down damage. So this is looks like three direct nerfs, to be honest, because your health growth increasing means your cut down is going to do less to your opponent. So... You're not going to get that same damage that you're going to get. We're going to have to really dive into calculations. If someone can really dive into those calculations, it'd be really good. Uh, I'm sure a Quinn player would. Maybe I'll do it myself. Really, really, really dive into the math. Like, uh, how does this change in some matchups? Like, how much damage are you losing in some matchups? Is Cutdown going to proc early lane phase against champions building Dorans? If so, which ones don't? Like, I really want to dive into that. That's really the only downside of this health chain. Uh, these two damage things at the start, it seems really bad, like really, really bad. But the more you dive into it, it's not as bad as I thought because all Quinn players go W max uh, and you go Q max second, E max third. So you're level 18 when this E hits and E does no damage anyway. So this 20 damage that you lose on E late game, it's just late game. Early game is the same. Like literally is just a late game scaling. So I'm sure the scaling be down. E will not, you'll not notice it. The Q will suck for wave clear. So as long as they keep static shiv as it is, like as it stands, we're okay because you have wave clear. That item's broken on Quinn. But as we know, Riot Games, what's going to likely happen is she's broken because of an item. They're going to gut the item. They're going to destroy nerf the item. Then when they destroy nerf the item, um, <laughs> they're going to not compensate buffer. So... If they keep static shiv as is for a long time, the nerf's not bad. Because the most thing you're going to notice from the Q nerf is that your wave clear is going to suck more. But if you have static shiv, it doesn't matter. So the second you notice the Q nerf, you have shiv. So it's whatever. But if they get rid of static shiv from the game or nerf it so it's unplayable, and you have this keep this Q nerf, your wave clear is going to hurt a lot. So that's going to suck. Lethality Quinn's a big hurt from this. Crit Quinn doesn't really matter as much. Um, so that's my thoughts there. Now we're really diving into the health changes. Again, as I talked about earlier, health changes kind of suck because your cutdown value gets a little less. But I really analyzed, so I've been playing Quinn again for a long time. I used to play your AD carry. Um, uh, patch 8.11. Okay. Uh, so again, I brought up some things. So patch 8.11. So if we're going into the sense, okay. Quinn received QOL buffs before this. Then this patch happened. This was the patch where... Quinn literally was played competitive for LCS as an AD carry. So I'm really diving into this, okay? This patch, 8.11. All AD carries got gutted. If you guys played Season 11, you know what I'm talking about. All AD carries got gutted because they thought that fleet, it was too much sustained bot, whatever. You can read this if you want. You can pause it, whatever. Basically, they thought that too much sustained bot. They want more, like, fights bot. They don't want AD carries to, like, sustain and safe. So they nerfed the hell out of all AD carries. A lot of champions like Kindred, Cog, uh, Corky, uh, Quinn, uh, they're not considered marksmen. AD carries, so they're left off the list. So they nerfed the stats like armor going down, attack damage going down, uh, 
impact damage growth going up, a health going down, or a health going up, health growth going up, health regen going down. So basically, you have to fight more. Okay. Uh, then after this, a lot of AP champs, Bid Plague, etc., bot lane. You're seeing like Syndras, Vlad's, uh, Vanguard's. AD carries were known as a meme for like two years, bro. If you guys have played this time, like no one would, like literally no one would play AD carries. They were so bad. The class was terrible. Terrible. Quinn was played in LCS because she was not including on this list. So she had better base stats than every AD carry in the game. Every ADC in the game, she had better base stats. So she was picked, spam pink bot. Then she got nerfed, I think in 8.16, can't remember the exact patch. She got nerfed because to match up with this because people were playing her bot lane <laughs> and she was broken. She was picker ban. Picker ban. Storm Razor just got introduced. Very strong champ. Then they realized, okay, everyone's complaining. Eddie carries are a meme. Tyler one made a whole meme about it. Eddie carries are so trash. Quinn caught up to this nerf, so everyone was affected because they directly nerfed Quinn after this. Then Quinn was removed from bot lane 10.11. This patch here. Each champion gets a small base stats to improve their health and health growth. Um, so again, health goes up a little bit. Health grows up a little bit. Quinn wasn't included on this list. Because look, old solo laners like Lucian, Callista, Vayne, Tristana, they don't want to make them too strong. So they give them them specific buffs. Every AD carry in the game, health stats buff. Quinn and uh, Corky were left out because they're not... And Kindred, those three champs only. Corky, Kindred, Quinn. Those are not AD carry champs. So they got no freaking benefit, bro. They just got gutted, bro. They didn't care about them. Ride did not care about them. So Quinn couldn't play bot lane after this. Because every AD carry has got freaking more health, more health growth than you. Plus the other base stats, like it just it really hurts you, bro. It hurts playing bot lane because they just have way better stats than you. So now what I'm doing this rant on, okay? Talking about this health change that a lot of people are overlooking. Is that I really think that this is actually a, a good change for Quinn bot. Also Quinn top depending on the cutdown value, how much damage you lose. Because from level 1 to... Uh, it depends on the how they do this scaling. But from level 1 to level 8, straight buff. Straight buff, because you just get extra health. Um, and then we'll see the Q. The Q nerf really hits like level 13-ish. So, uh, most of the early game, you just got straight buff. And then you get this nerf, and then this nerf starts scaling. Which, this E1, you won't know, really recognize at all. The E1, you'll not realize. I'm telling you. The Q will, you will, for wave clear. But then you get those health growth stats. Someone did a post uh, here at reply. Hold up. A lot of people complaining, holy shit. Where is it, bro? <laughs> Where is the thing? Some, uh, uh, someone posted the health, the exact health, because they did the math, and I'm too lazy to do it right now. Hold up. But now there's so many people replying on this that I can't even find it. Someone talked about it. Hold up. Right here. Okay, sorry. So, if you do the math, Queen gets 136 extra HP level 18 and loses 40 damage on your Q and E, which are long cooldowns, which is not bad. Uh, Ruby Crystal is worth 400 gold and it's 150 HP. So 150 HP is worth 400 gold. So you get like what? Like 300, like high 300 extra uh, gold deficiency with your HP. You lose 40 damage. So most net buff with that, to be honest, right? As you see. Then we're looking at the actual numbers because we're diving into this, right? Quinn's base health is 603. That's not going to change. Your health growth is going to change. So we can do quick maths. Uh, 136 HP. Plus 2286 max late game. So I looked at the other AD carries in the game like Lucian Callista. They're, they get like 2300 HP late game. You're literally going to have the highest HP out of every AD carry in the game. Um, I didn't dive into all of them, so I could be wrong. Take that with a grain of salt. I never did the math. But I think Quinn is actually going to have the highest HP AD carry out of every champ late game. I didn't dive into all of them. I dived into a few. I dived into like Lucian uh Kaisa, Vayne, like I dived into a lot, not all of them, so I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But she also has the highest health growth, right? So look, her health growth went from 99 to 107. Her health growth is now the highest. It was already the highest, now it's 107. So look at everyone else's health growth from this. Look, 88, 87. These guys only got like two health growth. 93, 90, 88, 93, 86, right? So it's like Quinn's before was already the highest. Now yours is 107. So you're a massive health growth compared to other AD carries. So I think, again, we're going to have to dive into this, but I think Quinn actually has the highest health growth or the highest health, the highest health growth, yes, because we can see that 
Uh, but I think that she actually has the highest ha ha base health out of every AD carry in the game later. So, what am I going with this rant? Uh, I think that actually Botling Queen gets a bit... Like, she's going to be a lot more playable if, if I'm seeing this correctly of how she goes with this. And it might actually be a buff for most cases because level 1 to 8 is just straight buff. Like, straight buff. You just get HP, extra HP. Level 8 onwards is when you start noticing a little bit of the nerf. Uh, which is not too much because level 9 you get your W max. Level 10 you get a second point. You get the third point in Q. Level 11 you get your alt. And then level 12, 13 you get your last points in Q. Which is when you're probably going to notice it the most. But at that point of the game you already have your shift completed. So that's my thing. It's only an extra 134 health at 18. That's what you said Monster Killa. Uh, it's not only 134 HP. You have to realize that if you're playing like a tank and it's that. It's not that much. But when you're playing a squishy champ. This health matters a lot. Because uh, Ruby Crystal is 400 gold and it's worth 150 health. So that means 150 health in the game is worth 400 gold in stats. So you basically get like almost 400 gold worth of stats late game. And it's really going to get an 80 carry champ that's squishy because the more health you get, the less chance you get one shot or die. Right? That could literally change from someone using a whole combo on you. Because how Quinn works is if someone uses a whole combo on you, you don't die. There's a good chance that you just turn around and kill the guy. Like Quinn needs to get one shot. So... Having that extra health can help with those one shots. That's an issue. Grass fall very quick. Hey, a lot of good. So yeah, that's that's uh, that's what my uh, that's what my uh, my rant is with that. Okay, Zeri. Yeah, Zeri's a, a unique champ though. Zeri's a unique champ. This, I was also doing this before Zeri was introduced, as you see. This is season ten, so I haven't included the new AD carries. It, it it seems like just a straight like like if we're looking at everyone's thinking just full nerf hate riot etc and i thought that too but if i really dive into it i think it's more of a buff than a nerf like i think it's more of a buff than a nerf as i did my analysis right there um you have to realize zed ults you like him kiana ults you kane ults you they'll try to assassinate you they blow their whole combo on you. And if you just live, bro, Quinn can turn that fight around and literally kill the enemy late game. And, or any point of the game, depending on where you are. She's such a slippery champ that her counterplay is getting one shot. But if you don't one shot her, she's so slippery, she'll escape the fight. That's what's really good about Quinn. So the health is so valuable on her. I'll show you the value of it, especially against like a fad, fad like assassin here. This is obviously pre-buff, but this is the value of like, of like what I'm talking about, like where it really matters, right? This is obviously not where the buff is, but this is where like little bit of HP or something like changes kind of things. Cause like assassins like this, like a cane. He has to one shot you. So I was playing against me yet. That's me there. Uh hold up. Alright, my arena game started too. Okay, look, right? We're both level 18, right? You're in a intense fight. Right? He ults you and he has to 100 to zero you. If he doesn't with this combo, you pop off. So look, you live with one HP, off his combo you live. So you have that little bit of HP, right? Uh so now you get to a point where like that's like the th common thing with all assassins. They have to blow their whole alt combo on you. If you don't get 100 to 0, you just kite them to death. Or just kill them. Or blind them. Or E them. Or use your range. Because they have cooldowns they rely on. Quinn doesn't need cooldowns. She's an AD cure at the end of the day. So, that's where I'm going mostly with it. That's where I think it's valuable. Because that play I just showed you. But imagine that against those other assassins like him that like have that hit the extra things on you. Like he has his whole combo may still live with a little bit of HP. But that's like where it's super valuable. Like those situations, full late game. Remember, five 150 HP is worth 400 gold worth of stats for a reason. Right? I'll, I'll play. Uh, next in the sweep of durability was Quinn. I mentioned earlier uh, with marksman changes with Akshan, um wanting to basically go power neutral on shifting Quinn to be more durable. Wait, am I on the right scene? Yeah, I am. Okay, okay. Wait, am I on the right scene? Wait, what? Okay, here yeah, I am. I am. Uh, and a little bit less lethal overall, um, letting Quinn rely a bit more on her W, on her auto attacks. Um, I saw a Reddit comment that was like, if you want Quinn to rely on her auto attacks, um, unnerf the W. And there's certainly an eventual much. tactic long term. I didn't eventual want to, tactic. much like with uh, the Hecarim changes, write in a bunch more lines to like try to keep you reshape the champion. It's like, hey, um, for now, low risk, relatively low magnitude push the champion in the right direction and then if we need to follow up we will that's fine i don't personally mind following up on a champion after a patch and just being okay we can get a little bit more movement here um i think that's totally reasonable to do um i think in general i value doing low to mid risk nudges twice especially if you're not 100 sure what the impact is going to be 
instead of like swinging really hard, getting it wrong by a lot, and then being like, well, we have to immediately pivot here. And this is like, you know, I, I, like Aatrox, for example, got balance thrashed, where he went from too weak to too strong to weak to okay. Um, I'd rather be like, Quinn is like a bit too strong. Okay, we'll do like a kind of neutral change that like maybe is a slight nerf that'd be okay. Um, okay, where's she at now? Okay, cool, we can do another change. And it's like, and then a different change could be like, okay, let's reshape her more with a W or something, right? Just like. Uh so, yeah, so I guess he did admit one point that kind of scared me. He says Quinn was a little too strong. So that's also why he thought about this change. So that makes me worried that how could they revert that W if she was already strong? And then that would really put her over the edge. Like, just, I don't think it'll be too bad, though. Like, just make her alt 40% AD scaling again instead of the 70%. Revert the W. And keep the Q and E nerf as it is. I think that will be a pretty good change. But, again, her win rate did go down after the change. Because a lot of Quinn players did value the damage and lethality-ish. So, this is kind of good. But, um, I just hope that, I just hope that she's in a weaker spot right now. Which I don't think she is, but... If, if win rate wise she is then they'll consider doing a w change or you could just do like a little change like right now make w they need an arena change where quinn's w max is 70 percent. so do it like that like first do a w max a w buff on her attack speed to be 70 percent. see how win rate goes then put it to the full 80 percent um, after that could be an option just generally the thought process here uh anyway it's zero to 20 damage off of q keep in mind q has a total 80 ratio so the base damage is very very high in this ability um, and 0 to 20 damage off of Vault. Vault, of course, it needed too much damage to be valuable. But anyway, uh, Quinn typically maxes Q second in E third. So by level 18, it is 40 damage off the entire kit, uh, but eight health growth here. So let's talk about the number of changes here. Uh, Quinn's health is this, um, a solid 6%-ish more durability. Um, and then flat damage lower on the Q, flat damage lower on the E. Keep in mind, again, these abilities have AD ratio. So in the real world, she's building items like Static Shiv and Collector and whatnot. And uh, that's going to feed back in some more damage here. So the finishes are not quite as bad as you might see. And Q and E's base damages are not the like lion's share of Quinn's damage output anyway. So these numbers are just a little bit fake here overall in terms of the, the real impact of the champion. But uh, basically nudging her off of base damages to make her care a little bit less around lethality builds, less likely to go Yomu's collector type stuff. Um, I think it's totally reasonable to try to push Quinn towards a more default marksman kind of play style. Um, longer term, this might mean, yes, doing some more reshapes and, and putting power back in W and, and other stuff and find the right places to take power out. It's absolutely a possibility here. See, there you go. So he has, he has to find somewhere to take power out. Like, that's that's the problem. So how is he going to do that? Like, lower more, like, AD, like, like you know what I mean? Like, how, how do you succeed with that? Because W being at 80% revert, I don't think it's broken. But I feel like her win rate's in a pretty good spot right now. And Shiv is a broken item. Like, I'm telling you right now, Shiv on Quinn's broken, literally broken. So as that stands in the game, if they do anything, like, crazy like that, I'm um, just worried what the the downside on her win rate is. I don't want her to become a pick or ban champ. You know what I mean? So it's just hope that her win rate... Like her win rate dropped like one percent, but not many people have been playing. But like one ish percent from usual, uh, probably a little bit less. Uh, probably when it balances out, more players play. It'll be like half a percent that she probably lost in win rate. But then this W change will take it over the edge. So that's why I think revert the R to be forty percent. Put the W back at eighty percent, because I think that nerf was unnecessary. If shield bow was busted on her, and then they nerfed her for some reason, which makes no sense. So. I feel like just add that back would be nice. Uh, regardless, though, I think um, this is a direction going in the right direction of, hey, let's make some durability changes to champions who got affected uh, by midseason and are uh, winning a bit in durability compared to before. And so this is the direction. Yeah, so okay. that's what he said, but yeah, I don't know. We'll see how that goes. I feel like if he reverts W or does anything like that, that's all I care about. Like, to know that that's like what he's thinking, it's huge. Actually, it's huge that it's on his mind. I've been trying and trying to put myself me first. You and me go backwards. Tired of all this reverse. Got my face mask on.